wrong day, I'm getting man here. I'm in. Yo, what's going on guys, welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. I haven't done the tutorial in absolutely ages, but I thought I'd just come back and drop a nice little one that you guys have been asking for for ages. So this is basically the pencil sketch sort of uh, skin mask that you guys have been wanting that I've used in previous videos a few times. So I thought I'd show you how to do it as it is pretty unique in comparison to the regular old skin glow that pretty much everyone else is doing. So yeah, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. It's pretty easy, just follow along and yeah, you should be good to go. Alright guys, so as you know, I'm the nicest person in the whole editing car. Um, I've already got my rotoscope clip and the regular clip itself in a Google Drive which is going to be in the pinned comment along with all the other things you're going to need for this video there. If you want to go ahead and use that specific clip to make things a lot easier and quicker for you, you can go ahead and do that. If you do want to use your own clip for a client or just yourself, then go ahead and follow the steps I'm going to be showing in the next few minutes on how to exactly get that um, skin cut out and how to get the Twixter, the slow mo, all that stuff. So yeah, first off you just want to go ahead and get your clip. And you want to go ahead and find where the kill is as you can see it's right here where the blue damage pops up you want to keep this point and then from here you want to go ahead and go minus 40 frames back and split the clip okay so once you're going ahead and split the clip 40 frames behind the kill you want to go ahead and apply your twixter pro and you want to go ahead and keyframe that then you want to go ahead and go 25 frames forward from this point so you want to double click here 25 and then you want to go ahead and go on to effects and then here you want to go ahead and put this to 50%. Then you basically want to go where the kill is. Right. Just before where the kill is. So right here is good. And then you want to go ahead and put this to 300%. Then you want to go ahead and go 1, 2, 3, 4 frames to the right. Put this down to 10%. And then you want to go ahead and go about 15 frames back from here. So you want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then you want to go ahead and put this on exactly 25 percent and as you can see this is going to allow you to have your nice slow-mo twixter and then there's the kill then from here you want to go one two three four frames to the right and then put this down to 50 percent uh you can basically change this to whatever uh, actual value you want um, and sometimes you're going to get these repeated frames in order to fix this just change the background motion sense to like 54 for example and as you can see that's going to get rid of those overlapping frames so yeah, if you, you can basically just mess around with these. You don't have to use the exact settings I use, something similar towards that. And you should have something that looks a little bit like this. As you can see, I'm just going to pre-render it so you can get the gist of it. Now, obviously, the audio is out of sync, but don't worry about that. We're going to be adding our own sound effects anyways. And that's just the main sort of twixter that you can use. Now, finally, just to tweak this and make it look a lot better, you want to go ahead and go on to the set keyframes. Change the first two for smooth fades. Then go ahead and make this one a fast fade. Uh, sorry, make this one a slow fade. Make this one here a fast fade. And then make this one here a slow fade. And yeah, that's basically gonna go ahead and get your Twixter all done. Now I recommend rendering this clip out and we're gonna go ahead and import it into After Effects. I'm gonna show you how to rotoscope and do not be scared. It sounds all complicated. I thought that as well. But once I tried it, it was actually really, really easy. And I'm just going to show you the best way to do it. So yeah, go ahead and render this out and I'll meet you when we're in After Effects. Okay, so one quick thing is, if you don't have After Effects, which are many videos online on how to get it, I'm not specifically advising you to do so, but it is at your own risk. Um, if you don't have After Effects, you can go ahead and go on to Sony Vegas and just individually mask out each frame of the character that you want to cut out. It's a very long and tedious process, so I would much, I would recommend this a lot more. And I'm going to teach you exactly how to rotoscope as it is so, so easy. So what you want to go ahead and do is create a new composition in After Effects. As you can see, I've already done so. Now just make sure that your composition settings are on uh, the correct or the exact same resolution and frame rate as your uh, Vegas render settings. Then I couldn't be bothered to render the previous uh, example that I've just showed you. So I'm just going to use one from a old video. Go ahead and drag that clip in there. Then you want to go ahead and find the first frame where you want to start rotoscoping. So I'm just going to choose this frame right here. Then you want to go ahead and do Control, Shift and D. And then you want to go ahead and click on this tool right here, which is the Roto Brush tool. Double click on your layer. And make sure it's the layer where you have the first frame that you want to start cutting out. Then you just want to go ahead and draw down the middle, middle of the character, sorry. And as you can see, it will do a rough sort of rotoscope there. This obviously isn't good enough and you do basically want to go ahead and do this for each frame. So to fix it up, what you can go ahead and do is zoom in using your scroll wheel 
and then basically drag over areas where you think um, need more rotoscoping and then if it creates more um, gaps like this you can just hold alt and then sort of click around until it fits roughly around the area that you're trying to rotoscope so as you can see something like this would be good enough then you can just go ahead and regularly click around the areas that you still think need some work and then just do this it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but something rough like this as you can see that only took a few seconds for one frame then you just want to go ahead and hold control press the arrow key to go to the next frame sometimes it will automatically do it very accurately and then just find a frame where something drastically changes i don't think much actually does change because this is uh, quite easy to rotoscope the scope out um let's just keep moving until we find something decent as you can see right here so actually this has just done a really really good job of uh, rotoscoping it out for me but if you want to go ahead and change it you basically just keep moving frame by frame and altering it to your liking and once you've gone ahead and done that you want to go ahead and find exactly where the kill is uh, just keep moving to where the kill is so right there Control shift and D to split the clip and then on this top layer you can just go ahead and remove the roto brush effect and then that's just going to have the area that you wanted to be cut out cut out and then you can just go ahead and go to export or add to render queue go to output mode put this onto RGB and alpha this is very important make sure you do this then just go ahead and render that out and then we can go back into Vegas Pro. Okay, so now that we're back in Vegas, what you want to go ahead and do is drag in the original clip with the Twixer that you first put into After Effects and first rendered out of Vegas. And then you want to go ahead and also add the clip that you now have it rotoscoped as. So in order to remove the background, so as you can see here on the rotoscope, it is black in the background. You want to go ahead and right click on it, go to properties. Then you want to go ahead and go on to media. Scroll down to alpha channel and put this onto pre multiplied dirty and that's just basically going to remove the background and as you can see now um, when it's on top of the clip it is perfectly fine so make sure this is all synced up and it's the same clip and as you can see you can't even tell the difference because it's over the original clip then you want to go ahead and delete it where the kill happens and you want to go ahead and fade it in on top so it's not um, just all of a sudden then you want to go ahead and split on the bottom clip. Here's where we're going to be applying the impact. So you can go ahead and go in the pinned comment of this video where I have all the presets. And we're going to be applying the Tarot Extreme Impact. Uh, this is just basically a very extreme impact as the name suggests. Then on the actual rotoscope uh, clip layer, we're going to go ahead and add the Tarot Pencil Glow. Now depending on how long your um, rotoscope is, you want to go basically adjust these keyframes. So just hold control and click on the keyframes that you want to move and uh, make sure it's these square ones on the top and then you can basically move these all to the end so it fits for the exact length of your specific roto brush and as you can see you have the effect there then you also want to go ahead and go minus 40 frames back on this one you want to go ahead and split the clip hit effects and wait for this to load and apply the tarot background build up and that is going to just change the background as well for this then for multiple uh, characters you can do as many as you like i recommend one or three being the best you just want to go near the end of the clip uh, around here is good and you basically want to go onto pan and crop you can make it um, smaller a little bit and then you just want to go ahead and move it to the left and right and basically just adjust it in this specific position like so so I'd actually, you, this is all to your own liking by the way, so you don't have to copy exactly what I'm doing. There's something similar to this. From the first frame, you want to make this a smooth fade, like so, so it fades out from the character. And then you want to go ahead and go to the end and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 frames and hit the keyframe button to create a keyframe. Go to the end and then hit restore so it all goes back in right at the end and set this to a fast fade. And then this can stay on the same. Then you want to go ahead and drag and uh, hold control to duplicate this layer and then instead where um, on this specific keyframe you basically just want to go ahead and move it across so it's on the other side of the character and yeah you can basically mess around with this and do it however you think looks best for your specific clip and as you can see if you go ahead and also delete this one and hit the make keyframe then make this fast fade again what you're going to have is your really nice character sort of 
um, mask effect where it's, you've got three characters and then right here you're gonna have your really nice impact with glow shake all of that good stuff yeah guys that's basically how to do the whole effect in sony vegas if you would like a tutorial for other software such as premiere pro or after effects then make sure to go ahead and smash a like if we do hit 1000 likes in this video then i will go ahead and do it for all softwares and uh yeah that's basically the whole video guys i really hope you did enjoy if you did drop a like and subscribe to the channel with post notifications on and if you really do want to support me the extra mile and even just you know benefit yourself as an editor Go ahead and check out my editing pack link in the description it's only 4.99 and trust me there's a massive massive update coming as well so you will not regret spending only five pounds on the pack anyways guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace